subscribe now. EU debates. Well, first of all, it's not Lithuania doing anything. It's uh, European sanctions that uh, started working from the 17th of June. And uh, uh, the industry that is imposing the sanctions at this point is the railroads. They inform their clients that from the 17th of uh, June, uh, the sanctioned goods, EA steel and other uh, goods made from iron ore, will no longer be allowed to transit uh, Lithuania. It is done with consultations with the Euro European Commissions and under the European Commission guidelines. So uh, I think that there were some. Uh, false information, uh, not for the first time, uh, announced by the Russian authorities, but uh, I'm glad that we have a chance to explain this. Do you think this will be a bigger problem direct from Russia and Ukraine involved? No, I don't, no, I don't think so. I mean, at, at this point, uh, about uh, slightly less than half of uh, goods uh, that transit Lithuania are uh, in the sanction list. But that doesn't mean that all of them are sanctioned right now. That means that because there are different wind-down periods, and some of it, as for example, for oil, it will be sanctioned just at the end of the year, starting from uh, December, uh, even though the authorities have announced that uh, it is uh, sanctioned already. Well, it's not, not true, actually. Russia is slowing down the gas supply. Yeah. Germany, yeah. So is this now the moment to turn off the gas uh, oneself from the European side saying, OK, well, I think that basically Russia is showing that what kind of leverage does it have on EU. Uh, truly, we've always known that. We've always been speaking about this in the Foreign Affairs Councils. Uh, but this is the time when we actually see how, how it works. So basically, it just has to be, we have to be more resilient, uh, more, uh, to show more force and do it, do it faster, to find new uh, deliveries where we can purchase uh, purchase the gas and for example today we have a meeting with the Egyptian foreign minister and obviously that will be one of the topics that we'll be discussing but also also food crisis which is uh, you know a huge huge problem and we're still not finding any any solution to it so we'll we'll talk about this as well yes well, we have the instruments to, to finish the war much faster. We always have. And uh, if we would fulfill not the 10% of what Ukrainians are asking, but uh, 90%, so the war would not take years and years. Yeah, absolutely. And it will remain trickle if uh, the Black Sea ports are not opened. And to open them, it's uh, military equipment is needed. And uh, I've been speaking about that for almost two months now, together with the Ukrainians. They're saying that they need uh, equipment and means to defend, to defend the ports. And if we're serious about helping to solve uh, the food crisis, we have to be serious about defending, defending the ports. Some of the equipment is already being sent to, to Ukraine. And we're seeing that not from the equipment side, but from the Russian losses side. But this is actually what is, what is needed. Unfortunately, there is no other way. There's no other way to, to open up uh, Odessa and other, other ports in the south of, of Ukraine. And, uh, and there are European countries, European Union countries, who have the equipment that is needed. And if they provide this, uh, I think that we can uh, solve the crisis much, much faster. No, I would not name names because I don't know who has uh, the equipment. I know that the requests have been sent to, uh, to big and small allies uh, in a similar fashion. And I'm truly hopeful that this, uh, that request will be heard, the equipment will be delivered, and uh, to my knowledge, that could solve the, the problem very, very fast. Basically, we need a deterrence. We need a deterrence for Russians that they would not attack uh, a news opportunity when the ships are leaving the ports, and they would not use this opportunity to attack to attack the port and the grain itself. You mean that you are dropping the alternative route to export grains from uh, from the grain to, to the Baltic states and the Baltic ports? We're not dropping any any routes, but the problem is that any other route is not practically uh, sufficient. Basically, if you want to uh, export the amounts that Ukrainians have, we're talking tens of millions of grain, tons of grain. Basically, the only route is, is the Black Sea. Uh, Clive at the port, Gdansk port, uh, Konstanza port, they can do their part, and we're doing our part, actually, as of now, but uh, the amounts are very, very limited.
No, it's not a done thing. Uh, I would very much support this because the expectations are very high and not just from the political elite in Ukraine, but also by Ukrainian people. I think it has to happen, but obviously this decision has not been yet found. How okay. Uh, well, rhetorics. <laughs> Thank you.